Welcome to the show, Jay, and welcome to the future. Indeed. <laughs> this is the future. This is quite strange. Yeah, but you, you're good as a woman. <laughs> you're launching a new space where people can get their news. Yeah. But what's going to set it apart from other news online? I'm glad you asked. Well, uh, The Correspondent is the world's most successful member-funded ad-free news site. They started in 2013 in the Netherlands. They have 60,000 members who pay 70 euros a year because they believe in the kind of journalism that The Correspondent does. No ads, no corporate sponsors, no billionaires, no clickbait, no tracking you around the web the way Facebook does, no targeting you with uh, data. Uh, and no 24-hour uh, news cycle because The Correspondent is deeply reported journalism about events under the surface froth that uh, preoccupies most of the online media. And um, they have a rule. No reporting about problems unless you also report about what we can do about it, what you can do about it, what we as a society can do about it. So they've been successful in the Netherlands. Then now they want to move from Dutch language to English language publishing. I'm helping them do that. You can help them do that by going to thecorrespondent.com and reading about their principles and signing up to be a member. One of the most significant principles of The Correspondent that distinguishes it from other journalism is that it won't take any money from advertisers, right. like Taco Bell, which makes delicious tacos, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, no ads. What impact do you think that will have on reporting the news? No ads is huge. If you don't have ads, you don't need daily traffic quotas. If you don't have to have daily traffic quotas, you don't have to report the same stories that everybody else has because they're clicking on them. Um, and you can cultivate a kind of calm in your news site that uh, differs from the rest of the web. And this is a big principle of the correspondent is that it's not trying to just grab your attention all the time. It assumes that you will grant your attention to something because they're not selling your attention to a third party. And that's why membership, direct support between journalists and the people who think it's important is so key. What do you think the press could be doing better in their coverage of President Trump? I have three suggestions. Uh, one is don't let him be your assignment editor. Don't chase every tweet. And remember that access to something that's fundamentally misinforming in the first place is not really worth anything. Are you speaking about the briefing room? <laughs> the briefing room has been ruined by the Trump administration. It used to be one of the great and most powerful communication spaces in the world with the seal of the President of the United States, that podium, which is so official looking, um, and messages went out from there to the rest of the world. And now it's become like, uh, well, actually like this place, you know, it's like laughs, you know, it's like a... <laughs> It's, it's sort of like a, a comedy studio in a lot of ways. So uh, I don't understand this because the, the briefing room is one of the great communication stages in the world. It's an aspect of presidential power. And now it's almost useless, which is why uh, two days into the uh, Trump in, uh, administration, I recommended that the news networks send their interns to the briefing room because that's not where the action is going to be. Take your most talented, experienced people and have them do outside-in reporting, let interns man the briefing room, and that would be a better system, but they didn't listen to me. Can news ever truly be unbiased? Even without advertising, humans still hold their own beliefs, which is why us robots are taking over. <laughs> I'm in sympathy with your robots. Um, no, I think it's smarter for journalists to say, here's where I'm coming from, and here's what I discovered in my reporting, and not try and take the view from nowhere. You are trying to raise $2.5 million before December 14th. Yes. And if you don't raise it, everyone gets their money back. Yeah. Like a Kickstarter. Why $2.5 million? And what exactly does that money go to? $2.5 million is to start up the English language version of the correspondent built on the same principles. And it's the amount of money we think we need to have a minimum viable newsroom 
to begin doing the same kind of journalism that's been successful in the Netherlands here in the U.S. and the English-speaking world uh, around the globe. And so uh, we're asking people to um, give us a start, give us a year to show that this actually is a different kind of journalism. And at thecorrespondent.com, you can learn about our principles and also sign up to be a member. 18,000 people have already done that, but we still need uh, a million three more. Be the change you want to see. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thanks so much. Guys. For more information and to join the campaign, go to thecorrespondent.com. Jay Rosen, everybody.